My name is Martin Anthony Nsuvuga. I'm the CEO of Uganda Retirement Benefits Social Authority. And I've served the institution until now. We have grown to the position of the Chief Executive Officer. So I've seen Ubra since its establishment. Um, I was also uh, the person who started the organization as interim CEO uh, for the organization. Uh, my role was uh, to set up the organization and, uh, and here we are. It has been a really new experience in my life. As um, you may have heard, Ubra was non-existence. There was no formal regulatory environment for pensions or retirement benefits. So we are a pioneer. We were appointed to set up the architecture and the environment for regulation of retirement benefits and uh, pensions. So the Ministry of Finance, uh, because I was the technical person really handling uh, all these reforms, they asked me to come and set up this institution, which is the Retirement Benefits Regulatory Authority. So I was uh, requested to start as an interim uh, chief executive officer, uh, which I did from the year 2012. Um, to early 2015. It's been a great journey. When we started, we started from scratch. The journey of 10 years of Ubra started with an act of parliament of 2011, but actual operation started in 2012, and that's why we are celebrating 10 years today. There was no institutional setup, there were no laws, uh, there was nothing. So we started with the legal framework, uh, putting in place the legal framework, that uh, establishes uh, the supervisor or the regulator for the retirement benefits sector. Before then, Ubra came into the market about 10 years ago. The first thing they did right from their first offices at Communication House was to take stock of the market. Who are the players? Who are the retirement players in the market? Who are the service providers? Which schemes are operating the market? Service to note that there was already something happening in the market, even before Ubra came to play. And because of that, there were Ponzi schemes, there were frauds and all those kind of things. There was no trust uh, in the sector. So our primary objective was to build a system that would do, uh, instill confidence in the general public. I believe the journey has been very successful. We have a footprint now in the community, um, and that footprint is best exemplifies uh, when we were appointed uh, the pension sector savings were less than less than five trillion today they're approaching 20 trillion a number of proposals were carried uh, to parliament and the biggest one was to actually put in place a sector regulator my role as a member of parliament when i came in 2001 was to make legislation. And one of the laws we have made is the Ubra Act, which basically came in to assist how to regulate the retirement pension funds which were missing in this country. I'm proud that now we have over 19 trillion shillings in the pension fund. That's a very good contributor to national development. And in the future, I'm sure this money we shall not go to borrow we shall use this man of the pension fund to really develop our country. You would appreciate that uh, this is not a small contribution uh, for a sector that was not regulated. Uh, but overall, it was part of the global reforms that we are seeing in other countries uh, in the pension sector. To me, that's a plus for the authority. And you can imagine in a very short time, in less than 10 years, we have over 19 trillion. It believes that within the next five years, we should be over 40 trillion. To me, that is a plus for, for Ubra and a, a surety for the people of Uganda who save with these different schemes, knowing that somebody is there making sure that my money that I put in any scheme is safe, is protected. So one of the main objectives was to safeguard the interests of the members. Now, what this means is that the moment members interest in years is that the sector, the, the assets under management, have more than tripled. So within a span of 10 years. 
we are seeing a lot of efficiency in terms of members are able to get their benefits, they are able to access more information about their schemes. More importantly is the professionalism that has been injected in the sector. There has been a deliberate effort to build trust because the foundation is strong, it can be trusted, and again, the investment structures are very solid, so which means they encourage the growth of the market, the growth of the portfolio, and also provide the positive returns that we see to date. The last one that is significant, which I've seen Ubra doing, is promoting transparency. So to a member, that information creates trust within the member because you are saying there's nothing I'm hiding. This is how we run the scheme in the year. There were 13 meetings and uh, this member of the board out of 13, he attended three. In the saving schemes, there was no trust. There was no confidence. There was a lot of risk. Even the savers could not know how much their contribution is where. Okay? In other words, everything was in a disarray without any regulator. I think as well, um, looking generally at the business environment, um, you rarely now see complaints of people stating that the funds that they thought they had in their names have disappeared or have been paid to the wrong person. And all this is just because of the supervisory role that Ubra has brought in, which has been pivotal in making us run a world-class pension sector in Uganda. There are three parts to any pension system. There's the contributions or collections of pensions, there is the management of the pensions or the investment of these pension savings, and then there's the payment of these pension savings, either through a lump sum or through monthly payments. We have had a shared responsibility with Ubra for the past 10 years in the aspect of management of the savings through investments uh, because many of the fund managers whom we license are also licensed by Ubra. Although Ubra focuses a lot more on the pensions or retirement savings that they uh, manage. So we have done this role together, we've had this shared role. The synergies we have drawn from this partnership have been very beneficial and we look forward to continuing to work together with uh, Ubra in the future. We see growth in number of schemes in this market. Today we are talking of 65 schemes. In the past we are talking of three uh, schemes that were established by an act of parliament. That is the public service pension scheme, the parliamentary pension scheme and the NSSF. All of them established by an act of parliament. More importantly is to say that the journey that Ubra has walked over the 10 years have been challenging but also refreshing in a sense that they came into a virgin market. There was no regulator before them, especially in the pension sector. So what they started with was commendable. Let's do a stock taking. Let's understand the market. Who is doing what in the market? So I think that phase helped Ubra create their visibility, create their identity for the first three, four years. Over the years, they've also been able to do publicity to kind of show the market, show the public that this is what we do, and especially as you plan for your retirement. At least for the last 10 years, we've not had any corruption, loss of members' funds. We've also not had any poor investments because investments are all known, structured, in particular known asset classes that provide a very good return to the member. And actually in this period in time, that's when the sector has witnessed high returns to the members, double-digit returns for the last five years or thereabout. So, in my opinion, that is trust from the general public. Work to be done. Uh, it's not over, there's still some reforms that need to be done, particularly in the area of limiting access to long-term savings. So Martin and team, please don't rest. There's still some more work to be done to grow the domestic savings base of this country. We feel that as a committee, Ubra needs to make itself more visible in, in Uganda, place itself, let the people of Uganda know what they're doing, let the people of Uganda know why they should save for retirement. If you were to ask me what should Ubra's next 10 years focus on, I would say that Ubra's next 10 years should be to now build this 20 trillion asset base that um, has been generated should actually be able to ensure a comfortable life in retirement for all members 
who are in the retirement schemes, but Ubra should also then allow and come up with mechanisms to support the players to be able to onboard all the small holders, all the informal sector to come in and secure their retirement by participating and joining the licensed pension schemes in the market. And so my thinking is that we need to support the institution, particularly Parliament of the Republic of Uganda, needs to support resource mobilization for allocation to the authority so that the authority can continue with the widening the coverage. People now, instead of keeping money in boxes, will keep here and it is in the financial sector and it's easy to tap in. And the cost of money will go down, but our investment in the country will go high. And I can tell you, if you make very good regulations, we will have the support of Parliament. I believe that the next 10 years are quite pivotal. We've gone through uh, the best building of the industry. And right now, we are at the point where we have to be tasked with generating value for our clients and exhibiting relevance over the next 10 years. I'm very, very confident. In fact, I'm, I'm really proud of, of the work that has been done for the last 10 years and my imagination runs wild uh, what what is possible for the next 10 years and um the other key achievement that uh, or work in progress that ubra is trying to do which i again encourage different stakeholders in this sector particularly parliament to support ubra is the the coming up of, with a national micro pension scheme uganda is um our economy is largely informal and even within the cities, we have so many people who are operating informally and yet they earn income, either daily, either weekly or monthly. They earn income in one way or the other. But if not well guided, and I think this particular scheme, the micro pension scheme, would again help reorganize our people in the formal sector to put something aside. Because if you are in our market today, if you are a road vendor today, if you are a hawker today, if you are a border border today, if you are a fisherman today, you still have that energy to go nearly every day in the waters and do fishing, to go to Nakawa market every morning to pick tomatoes, vegetables. But that strength with time, with time, as years come by, begins to dwindle. That means the same basket that you can carry now, you are not able to carry in the next five years or ten. So our focus, what really keeps us awake, when I wake up in the morning that drives my day, protection of members' funds. So what I see going forward for the next 10 years is an organization that is efficient, that is creating value for the benefits. Efficiency meaning when I contribute, I must be guaranteed that 20 years from now, 30 years from now, when I retire, my money will be there. And, and ensuring that the monies that I contribute are invested in assets that will make my money grow. Not just putting in one shilling, and 20 years you are paid one shilling. When I put in one shilling, I should be paid 100 shillings at the end of 30 years. And that's the objective, and that's efficiency. I think to the customer out there, um, who might not even think they are a customer because you ride a border border, you are in the garden, you, you, you don't even have anything to your name, Ubra will find you wherever you are and will look after you because it's their mandate to look after you in retirement. And they can only look after you in retirement if you avail yourself now. And all they want to do for you is to make sure that when you hang up your boots, when I hang up this jacket in retirement, Ubra wants me to live a fulfilled life, a life bereft of poverty, a life of joy and happiness. And Ubra works with people and different entities to deliver that. As service providers, I think we want to say um, congratulations again, Ubra. Um, we feel the heat sometimes, but we are ready for the task. As we celebrate, let's also remember that there are those who are not yet part of the saving culture, and we bring, find ways of bringing them forward. I wish you a happy celebration. As we celebrate 10 years of service protecting retirement benefits in this country, Allow me to thank the Board of Directors of Uganda Retirement Benefits Security Authority. They have been very instrumental and very focused. Allow me also to thank the staff and management of UBRA. You have supported the cause. Allow me also to thank my predecessors, 
the first interim CEO, Mr. Moses Bekalia, the chief executive officer, my immediate predecessor, uh, Mr. Bonyi David Nyakonde, the government of Uganda who have supported us, providing us with all the resources that we need from the day UBRA started up to now, the regulated entities, the stakeholders, the fund managers, the custodians, the administrators. Without you, we would not be talking of structures of governance in this market. And of course, the members who are saving, who have trusted us, who have continuously saved with the different schemes. Allow me to assure you that as we deliberate on this direction for the next years of service, at Wubra, we shall continue to protect your retirement benefits. May God bless you. May God bless your families. May God bless our country, Uganda. Let us celebrate as we thank God. Welcome to the Creative Industry Talk. This week, my name is Eddie Okela, and in the studio is Faizo Chiwewa and uh, Rasbi Sali. Back the on the show, the legend, as uh, Faizo says, gentlemen, welcome to the show. <laughs> and uh, of course, we need to play Rasta's song today. Yeah. People yeah. just don't know that Rasta has uh, yeah, yeah, a album. give you his rights. <laughs> <laughs> Rasta, welcome to the show. Thank you. And uh, Faisal, welcome back to the show. We missed you last week. Uh, the internet wasn't uh, doing us justice, yeah. but we're happy to have you back on the show today. Thank you. Good. How was your trip? It was good. It was good. A and uh, relaxation, I think. Yes, from Karamoja riding the bicycle with kids to wherever, I went. To wherever you went. <laughs> flying. So those are a good one. Mm. Uh, Mr. Bicycle himself, how are you today? <laughs> good. Yes, you know, Rasta is always riding every Saturday. Actually, yeah, I, I wanted to recommend him to do the Karamoja thing. Yes. I did the 60, 64, 64 okay. kilometers yes. in uh, three hours, which was really nice. I'm sure Rasta oh. will, will enjoy it. Yes. Oh, that's cool. I need to go for, for that as well. And uh, to all of you out there, welcome to the Creative Industry Talk. My name is Eddie Okela, Faizo Chiwewa and of course Rasbi Sali. We are back to talk about the situation surrounding the creative industry in Uganda. And our topic this week is not far from where we started last week, which is the COVID-19 and its effect and impact on the creative industry. Specifically, we want to focus on uh, investments, investors, events, and partners. This week, we want to talk about partners in that regard. So I will start with you, um, Faisal. Uh, it's an ordinary situation like pandemics mm -hmm. disrupt normalcy and uh, can shake up the industry very much. And we're seeing the sector either can be positively impacted or negatively impacted. Obviously, the creative industry in Uganda has been heavily, heavily negatively impacted. Mm. And um, what are the positive developments on the creative industry uh, so far this week, which we can attribute to COVID-19 or this month of April? <laughs> yeah, now that you're in the month of Ramadan. 
Yeah, first of all, it's very good um, that we are fasting. It takes away the, uh, you know, the stress of uh, worrying about food yeah. for the creative. <laughs> so I recommend all the creative people who are not having any revenues, yeah. fast. Yeah. It will save you some revenues. Uh, but on a serious note, I think it is very... Um, um, there are some significant strides that have been achieved within this period. Uh, some of us have been busy working on certain new products on the market that we are going to bring in and uh, like this this Friday we are doing an orientation of our new platform mm -hmm. an e-commerce platform that we have been developing for the past eight months yeah. and uh, I would really credit that to COVID because before we didn't have the time we we're so busy with the events and uh, you know the usual business uh, now when we went back home and had time to be uh, in our own uh, spaces we found ourselves thinking and what can we do differently how can we create sustainability how can we not get you know surprised again like we like like we are now with the covid so we are not prepared but now i think it has given us an opportunity to um you know to think how best can we do things differently how can we survive but i'm also worried that one of the disadvantages of the of it is that we are going to lose a lot of creatives mm -hmm. because many of them that have been really were depending on the on the arts for example in theater in in film in dance have not had any opportunity to get any support or any revenues mm -hmm. and even before they were struggling so now during this lockdown they have really suffered more and i really think most of them are going to change their careers to do certain things that are different so in the next very near future we are going to find ourselves starting again to build a new industry because of this uh, pandemic yeah wow mm. rusty we left the show last week when you were talking about um we need to help creatives to come up with something and uh, are there any positives so far since you appeared on the show that uh, you've come with today that we can start from like Pfizer said this month uh basically before i kick off hopefully my Body scent is okay for you. For me, 